I want to talk about Birch Avenue. Why is there this weird empty spot over to the right? Why is there another weird empty space at the next bridge? Why are they even bridges at all? All of the other crossings in the area are level crossings. Why does Birch have this weird curve at its north end? And why is it divided into two parts just south of Barton? What's with this dangly bit at its southern end? Is it just due to the hydro pylons? So, the answer goes back to 1898. The Hamilton Radial Electric Railway was an interurban passenger rail service. It stretched from Hamilton, across the beachfront, through Burlington, and terminated in Oakville. They had previously been running their trains up Sherman Avenue. This path had two level crossings with the Grand Trunk Railway, which caused frequent delays. They agreed to reroute under the Grand Trunk by going through this as yet empty section of land and along the coast of the Sherman Inlet. Apparently at the time it was called the Coal Oil Inlet, but you try saying that. And along the coast of the Coal Oil Inlet. Along the coast of the Coal Oil through this as yet empty section of land and along the coast of the Coal Oil Inlet. 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 And along the coast of the Sherman Inlet. Further south, the rail lines curved to connect Birch to Wilson. It wasn't until later that Birch Avenue was built around the rail lines. The radial line was later double-tracked by the HSR in 1904 when it became part of the Crosstown route, connecting the industrial north end with the Belt Line further south on King Street. In 1924, the tracks were moved to the west side of the street rather than running down the middle of it to make more room for cars. <laughs> It wasn't all rosy, of course. In 1923, there was a fairly serious collision. The Brantford and Hamilton radial train was heading west along Barton when it was struck by the HSR trolley heading north up Birch. Luckily, everyone survived, and both trains were back in operation within a few months. In fact, the only real casualty was this jitney, or unlicensed taxi. The Crosstown route was abandoned in early 1948, and by 1950, Hamilton had stopped running the streetcars altogether. Birch Avenue became a graveyard of unused streetcars waiting to be scrapped. By 1951, the tracks and trains were fully removed, but evidence of them still remains. There are still these extra wide underpasses, both here at the CN Spur Line, as well as the disused TH and B Line. You can even still see the supports that held the overhead wires. Here, the line diverted from the street and went under the tracks where this billboard is today. You can see the supports for the old bridge there still. On the other side, the tracks went around this building, followed the path of this sidewalk, along the hydro corridor, through this parking lot for Walt's Variety, and then through the city-owned parking lot, which is now the creatively named Municipal Car Park 42. Following that, it went through what is now the east side of Powell Park. The Birch to Wilson connection is now this small park, apparently called the Sturton Tot Lot. You do not see a lot of tots here. All this makes me disappointed at the short-sightedness of our former city planners. Where would Hamilton be if we still had all of our old streetcar lines? Where would Ontario be if we still had our electric radial and interurban lines? There's something I love about all these reminders of Hamilton's industrial past. This city has so many examples of its history hidden in plain sight like this. Rail lines become trails. Landfills become parks. Churches become... well, nothing. That's, that's a bad example. And all of these are examples of Faded Hamilton. Hi, that's the name of the show.